What's going on guys? I'm back today. I'm here at Better Fresh Farms uh, and I'm here with the owner Grant Anderson and he's going to explain his setup to us and show us everything he's doing here in uh, Guyton, Georgia. I think it's a pretty unique system. I've never seen it before until a couple days ago and I reached out to him and he was kind enough to uh, to give me an exclusive tour of his his uh, his unique uh, hydroponic business. So, Hey everybody, uh, Grant Anderson. Uh, Better Fresh Farms is an idea that we came up with in January of 2016. Uh, trying to do something good for our area, grow clean local food year round uh, to try and provide a better option for folks locally. Um, what you see right here is our work area. Uh, this is our work table where we do all of our harvesting, seeding, and transplanting. Uh, the lower section of the table you can see the plants that we've gotten started here. Uh, we have seedlings on the base here germinating and then we have some other plants here maturing getting ready to move into our towers uh, to grow into full-size plants. Uh, a lot of the equipment you see here helps regulate the nutrients and the pH balance of our water. Uh, it's a, a nutrient-rich solution that runs over the roots of our plants either in this table or in our towers uh, to keep them supplied with plenty of nutrient to grow. Uh, all of our plants also gather their light from high efficiency LEDs. Uh, it allows our plants to photosynthesize indoors uh, so we can control our environment and give them the perfect conditions to grow year round. That's awesome. Um, how about your setup back there? How does all that work? Yeah, so essentially we're going to take about three weeks, two to three weeks of time according to what we're growing where our seedlings spend time here getting ready to move into these towers. Uh, each of these towers holds anywhere from 10 to 20 plants, according to what we're growing. Uh, they align vertically, and as you can see here, once they're transplanted, seedlings move in here and grow to maturity uh, vertically from top to bottom. They're drip irrigated. Uh, all the water on a timer will flow through here. The plants draw what nutrient and water they need from the, the flow going through from top to bottom. And then the water drains off into these gutters and runs back to our main tank in the floor. So it's a closed loop irrigation system. Uh, each day, over 4,000 plant sites are fed by this nutrient rich irrigation system. Uh, and it only consumes roughly 10 gallons of water a day. That's pretty low. So between the seedlings, the germinating seeds, and all of our towers, we have roughly 7,000 plant sites, right. both mature and seedling and all of those are fed with less than 10 gallons of water a day. Man. Now what kind of uh, what kind of product do you uh, produce in here? What are your main staple? Uh, primarily vegetables? what we're doing right now is converting a lot of our test crops to lettuce. Uh, we've tried seven or eight different things in our system and have found that there are two specific varieties of butterhead lettuce that do the best in our system. Um, so we're converting most of our plants to, to lettuce but we also have some mustard greens, some radishes, uh, a little bit of Swiss chard and dill, and we're constantly tinkering and testing different crops to try and figure out what we're gonna do next. Um, as part of your visit, our next step is we're gonna try and grow some peppers and see how those do in our system. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool, I know all, all the pepper heads. Hey, the good thing is if you grow peppers, you can you can mail them out anywhere in the U.S. That's a, that's a, that's a cool thing. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, in addition to what we're doing with restaurants in Savannah and the farmer's market in Forsyth Park. We're getting ready to start a, a farmer's market in Pooler as well. Um, and are also looking to try and get something going locally in Effingham County. We've had a lot of support, uh, a lot of people asking how we're doing and what's going on and where they can support us. Uh, there's no existing structure like a farmer's market in Effingham where we can just plug ourselves in and start selling. Uh, like there is in Chatham County. So we're trying to figure out the most efficient, most effective way to make our produce available for people in the Effingham area. Um, one thing that's available, anybody who wants lettuce for some of our greens is welcome to reach out to us. We do case-by-case -case sales uh, as people need them. Um, it doesn't have to be a formal process. There is no order form on our uh, website. Uh, if you call my cousin Zach Conaway or I or email us through our website, uh, we have food growing year-round. There's stuff available every week. Uh, quick phone call or a message and, and we're able to supply anybody around who's interested. That's awesome, that's awesome. I'll definitely also put uh, your information down in the description of the video so uh, anybody local wanting to contact you guys will be able to uh, to find that. Wow, look at that. 
That's crazy. Now, you also have the ability to uh, be able to monitor things through your smartphone with this system? We sure do. Uh, the company that we purchase this equipment from is named Freight Farms. They're out of Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, they've developed an app called Farmhand. Uh, and that app basically gives you visibility into the conditions in your farm at all times. Uh, while we're physically here, there's a computer behind you that shows us all the conditions in our farm. So we can see air temperature, humidity, CO2 levels. We can check our water and see pH levels, electric conductivity, and our water temperature. Uh, and we can also see weather conditions outside and how they may be affecting us in here. Um, but this same information is transmitted to our farmhand app on our phones uh, at least once a minute we get an updated feed and so whether we're physically at the containers or not we always have the ability to control the conditions in our farm uh, whether it be turning something on or off or making an adjustment to a level uh, in our system to make sure that we maintain the appropriate conditions for what we're growing at all times awesome I, I definitely like the sustainability uh, thing you guys are doing you know where you can grow in kind of much pretty much any kind of atmosphere uh, and um, yeah it doesn't matter if it's snowing outside or it's uh, 200 degrees outside uh, you're able to produce uh, fresh leafy greens all year round um, where you know it's pretty much it's dead of summer you know you're, you're getting stuff that's imported you know either out of state or out of country mm -hmm. um, and you don't know what they they pesticides or, or yeah. anything that's, that's been applied to them. And I just think uh, nowadays we'd be able to feed your your family something fresh, local, and then know, kind of know the process and and, uh, and and know what's going into what's being grown. Is a, I think it's a big deal. Yeah, um, uh, we've had a couple people come in here and they look at our tanks and they say, "So what do you do with your chemicals? How does that work?" And we pretty quickly adjust people. There is no chemicals. Uh, there's no pollutants that run off from our system. There's no diesel. There's no none of what you typically associate with agriculture. Uh, we use a two-part uh, powder, lettuce nutrient that we mix ourselves, and we use a pH balancer. Other than that, we have uh, a beneficial bacteria we add to our water for uh, root growth. It's actually an agent for root growth, but uh, everything we use is, uh, for the most part, a natural ingredient. Uh, we don't we don't use pesticides and herbicides because of exactly what you said. Uh, we want to make sure people locally know that when they buy from us, they get a clean, quality product. They don't have to worry about what other, what's on it or uh, where it came from. And in addition, you'll know that within one to two days of harvest, you're getting your food. Uh, most of the food we deliver or sell at farmers markets, we harvest the same day. Uh, and because of that, a lot of our customers, whether it be restaurants or um, or farmers market customers, tell us that our lettuces are lasting in their fridges. Uh, in the neighborhood of two weeks or better. Uh, wow, that's pretty good. One reason is the root system still attached, so the first few days your plants are actually still living as long as they're refrigerated properly. Um, but the other is that it hasn't been out of the field, quote unquote, for as long as most of the food you buy in your grocery stores. Um, plus, the variety of food that we offer is something you don't see on a grocery store shelf. Uh, you don't see a lot of texture and color to most lettuces. You're buying you know, your basic iceberg, iceberg or, yeah. you know, mass-produced green um, yeah or prepackaged green that that goes bad in two days if you don't eat out the bag yeah and, and then you don't know, you know what they will kind of what agent they put in to keep the freshness of it we've been doing a lettuce mix with the heads that don't look as as pretty um, to sell as a full head of lettuce we'll crop those down and make salad mixes out of them oh, nice. uh, and our salad mixes will hold in the fridge for up to two weeks too uh, even cut lettuce because it's been you know when we mix those salads it's the day we harvest them and so when you buy them it's one to two days since we've harvested them at most. Um, That's awesome. And so like you said, one of the other benefits is no season. Uh, we could grow collards and mustard greens year-round if we wanted to, uh, which is something that people around here consume a lot of. Uh, we can grow lettuce year-round. Typically you have cold weather varieties or warm weather varieties. We could grow either year-round. Uh, so if there are chefs that want to work with us, we could grow custom crops for chefs. If it's people locally who just would prefer certain items that they can't get out of season, we can keep those in, in stock as well. Um, it's just a lot of variety with what we can do and what we can grow at any point in the year. Man, 
Uh, you know, and that's the thing too is, you know, you don't, not only do you grow it, but you, you feed your family on it too, you know, I mean, you, what you grow is what you eat too, so it's not like you're growing and not eating it. Oh, no, that's uh, the truth. My grandma, uh, my aunts and uncles across the road, my cousin Zach and his family, my family, my in-laws, my in-laws' uh, parents uh, are all eating lettuce from our farms because we produce such a large volume each week that we do have the ability to sell to the public, sell to local restaurants, and feed ourselves. Um, it's awesome. And I can honestly say that my son is now a salad fan. He never ate lettuce before <laughs> we started growing it. Uh, and of course, I started taking it home more frequently. And now uh, he eats salad a few times a week, which I feel better about because you know, I feel it's yeah. better than a lot of the other stuff he could eat. I didn't even know, know you guys were doing radishes. And uh, and we even got our, our family eating a bunch of radishes because my wife will cook them. And they almost, it's like potatoes, like many little potatoes once you cook them down, you know, cook them. Uh, so you're not getting that, that, that spicy. You know, spiciness to if you if you cook them, they almost taste like little round potatoes. Throw them in a in a in a, in a uh, crock pot with a deer roast mm -hmm. uh, and some uh, and some other vegetables and radishes whole. Let them cook for slow eight hours. Man, it's just like a potato. I've never done that. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I mean, kids eating things it's a potato. Well, uh, speaking of things you can do with the food, this year. This is a sliding rack that we hang our mature plants on uh, to move them from the, from the back of the farms to the front so that we can work on them. Nice. Uh, but this lettuce is a Rex butterhead lettuce. And it actually, my grandmother wilts it down with her greens. Um, you can use it in your salads and such, or you can use it sauteed down in a pan. It's, uh, it's really tender and you can do things that you typically wouldn't do with a lettuce. Nice. But this is one of the favorites so far. A lot of people really like our butterhead lettuces. That's awesome. Um, well, I will guess, I guess we'll wrap it up. I really do appreciate it, Grant. Uh, this is a very, I mean, I, I, this is definitely new to me. Uh, and I'll take some shots of the outside and add it to people can see the outside of the uh, the building um, and it's a it's a, literally a freight container like you see it coming in on the ports and they have built this hydroponic climate control growing environment inside the uh, freight container uh, so basically this can be moved to anywhere anywhere and you can grow it um, I mean technically if you want to put it in your backyard you could do it or yeah uh, that part of the pitch from Freight Farms is the variety and ways you could grow. Uh, the very first slide in their presentation is grow food anywhere. Um, so you can't help but be interested in it. Uh, it really doesn't matter the environment or the conditions yeah. outside. You can operate it. There's actually some of our pumps running to add nutrient to our water right now. That's pretty interesting that you're kind of going out, you know, where they say just basically set up for green, but kind of going and testing other vegetables out to see what or works well in here or what varieties and what vegetables to kind of you know broaden your, your your scope of what vegetables you can supply people yeah uh, not just I mean I know it's kind of ideal set up for leafy greens but you know even um, some pepper varieties that are a little more cold tolerant that will still do well with the neutral right, right lighting and nutrients and uh, possibly even supply that and, and, and other I think probably most probably the only thing is is, is, is keeping it from drawing so far out just because of the yeah. space but oh, yeah. you know trimming and and topping I think you could probably uh keep uh keep certain varieties in there for sure of, of different different kinds of uh, vegetables uh, definitely I think the radishes would be a, a, a nice uh, a nice add in here yeah I think uh Frank farms they've sold dozens and dozens of these units now but there's only about 50 of them in operation around the United States and in other various countries as businesses uh, a lot of corporate 500 companies are, are interested because of the sustainability aspect of it growing clean food uh, they have the ability with their nutritional services options on campuses where they have big office buildings to provide food for their own staff uh, not only is cleaner and healthier than what they were buying from distributors or wherever else but they can produce it on site more cost yeah. effectively uh, and pay less for their food to get better quality food. Um, I, I definitely think this is the the, the, the 
the way of future growing and, and definitely in, in, in places where you know you know you can have a setup put it put up anywhere um, and uh, you know I know a fairly new company and, and, and you know still working out the tweaks and and uh, I, I'm sure as as time goes on they'll probably you know people come up with different ways to grow different products in here not just the leafy greens but kind of I don't ever see like corn or nothing like that because it's just not you know vertical plant you can grow vertical right. um, but uh, I'd be almost interested because uh, see if tomatoes would actually eventually work if you we have seen uh, we've you, seen some people doing what they call a spring variety of stock it up stock it up the, mm -hmm. the but we've also seen uh, the full size tomatoes would probably be difficult to eat yeah. in, unless we did something horizontal like you're talking about. Like the about. smaller, the smaller. Cherry you know, tomato yeah. size. We've seen some people actually growing some. They actually, wow. they, there's some people doing that successfully right now. Edible flowers is something I've seen people doing in these systems a good bit. Uh, that's coming more and more popular. The microgreens we discussed earlier. And of course, you know, anything that's a local source of food. Uh, by 2020, USDA anticipates current food supply chain not be able to meet local demands. There's going to be yeah. more population growth and more demand for local options, uh, and we feel like we're on the front end of that, being able to produce a high volume of clean local food. Definitely. Um, well, I appreciate it, Grant, man. Thank you so much for taking the time out and uh, the generosity. That, that thanks you guys everything. for your interest. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, if you have any questions, please comment down below, uh, either myself or Grant. Uh, you know, uh, post on his page or whatever. I'm sure he'll 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 uh, he'll definitely comment in the comments to answer any kind of questions that people have, either locally or wherever you're at. Uh, you know, uh, all about knowledge of growing and 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 teaching people and and you know also trying to lead people to a, a, a better way of eating food and a cleaner way of eating food and and uh, and, that, and that's what it's all about. Uh, but I, I definitely appreciate Grant, and, uh, and uh, thank you everybody for tuning in, and we'll see you next video. Bye-bye.